Editor-in-Chief of the Truth Gazette. We are here today in Washington, D.C. with Alabama Congressman Robert Adderholt. Mr. Adderholt, thank you so much for being with me today. Yeah, thanks, Carl. Good to be with you. Thank you. Our first question today is, what initially made you want to get more involved in politics and run for a seat in the U.S. House? Well, it goes back, as I was telling you a little bit earlier before I was... Uh, we were on camera. Uh, I actually uh, was involved in my dad's campaign, but going back to his race in 1976. Uh, I was your age, I was 11 years old, and he uh, ran for a for circuit judge and uh, for the area that I grew up in. I grew up in Haleville, uh, married in Weston Counties is the area that uh, we lived in. And my dad ran when I was 11 years old, and he uh, was engaged in a uh, campaign that I, uh, took a lot of interest in and uh, was involved in it, uh, trying to help him in his race. And so that sort of, I think, sparked my interest in campaigns and in politics in general. Now, I remember shortly thereafter, I was invited to go down to the state legislature and page in the state legislature. And so I got a little bit more uh, engaged or more involved in campaigns. That was the first time I was really brought face to face with uh, what I would call uh, the legislative side. My father was a judge and so he was on the judicial side, but the legislative side was when I went down and paged in Montgomery. And I was about maybe 12 at that time when I went and paged and just really had a great time doing it and uh, met a lot of great people and I just was fascinated with the legislative process. So that's really how I think my interest in politics started. And uh, it just evolved from there. I, uh, I uh, volunteered on campaigns when I was in high school, and it just sort of uh, snowball effect from that. And then, of course, I ran uh, for Congress uh, back in 1996 when, when I was elected. Prior to your run for Congress, like you just said, you served as the assistant legal advisor for former Alabama Governor Bob James right. and municipal judge for the city of Haleyville. How do you believe working with those offices prepared you for your job today? A couple things. First of all, being a municipal judge, you deal with the public uh, and you get to deal with people that are, and usually the municipal courts is where most people deal with the court system. Uh, it's not, most people don't go before a judge because they robbed a bank or because they've um, committed murder or because they have uh, been on drugs. It's usually because they get, a, get some kind of uh, parking infraction or they get a speeding ticket or something like that. So I was a municipal judge, so I got to deal with uh, the people that just, uh, you know, just made a mistake when they were uh, parking or when they were driving, and uh, they're there to pay their fines. So that was probably the uh, my first encounter with the public as as someone who uh, was I don't say in charge, but I was the municipal judge at the time, and so I could decide. And I, you know, I, I at that time had a chance to try to be fair, try to be just, to try to make sure that I was doing the right thing and uh, not uh, taking one side or the other. And uh, then, of course, at the, around the same time, I then was also assistant legal advisor to uh, Governor uh, Fob James, and I had a chance to more go to Montgomery, uh, be in a capital city. I had was raised in my hometown of Haleville, which is a small rural town in uh, northwest Alabama. So I didn't, uh, uh, I was not involved with politics on a day-to-day -day basis, but working in Montgomery, you, you were certainly involved. I, my office was there in the state capitol. Uh, I got a chance to be on meetings with the governor, uh, with uh, the attorney general, uh, especially working on, on legal issues, and just working with the day-to-day -day activities of the, of the governor's office. So it just made me have a better understanding of the of state government, how it was uh, operated, how it was uh, perceived by the public, and uh, you know, try to see uh, people just at their job that I was working side by side, trying to do the right thing to make uh, good government for the citizens of the state of Alabama. Congress passed the new tax reform bill last year. How do you believe this bill bill will benefit American citizens and make America great again? Well, the tax bill I supported, of course, and uh, it was the it was the bill that uh, President President Trump was very supportive of, and he wanted to see pass. And I think there, any time you can give tax cuts to the American people, it's a good thing. Uh, and I think that uh, we take in enough money uh, on the federal government that we can have, we can have things operate 
and I think we can give back and uh, looking for an opportunity to give the taxpayers back, especially on the federal level, is always a good idea. And so I was glad to support that legislation. But uh, another aspect of that bill that I, I think really is going to be a good thing, it really, when you give tax cuts to people, government is taking less money. The, the private sector, the public, is having more money in their pocket at the end of the month. And they're able to spend that money. And they're able to build the economy. And so I think that's what really benefits the American public is it really helps people uh, in the economy on a day-to-day -day basis. And also, it uh, helps uh, businesses to grow so they can hire people. So it's just a, a real uh, uh, effect where a lot of things come together. So tax cuts are just a, was a great idea. And I think anytime you can give a tax cut on the federal level, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to do. So it was uh, really a privilege to be part of a, a, a tax cut that really overhauled the tax system since uh, I was, of course, I've been in Congress, and well before I was in Congress, it was back in the mid-80s was the last time that you had any really major tax reform and tax changes. So I really do think that's part of making America great again. Now, that's not the only thing. I mean, you know, tax cuts are great, and they're, they're, they're it's, uh, certainly, I think, greatly beneficial, but at the same time, uh, there's a lot of other things that I know that's on the president's agenda and that uh, he wants to make America great again. And so there's a lot of other things that need to be done as well. But that is a that is certainly a, a very big component. Um, earlier this year, you met with President Trump on trade. Trade has been a big part of the U.S. economy during this administration. How do you believe America can work better with our trade partners in the upcoming years? I think for so long that we've done a lot of trade deals that were that were I think just. Uh, not very good, uh, and I don't know why uh, our administration gave in so much, because I'm talking about Democrat and Republican. I'm a Republican, but there's been uh, Republican uh, negotiations that I don't think were the best deal. And so uh, that was one thing that uh, I wanted to make sure that uh, when any trade deal that I vote on, it is not, it's going to be a fair deal for everyone. It's not just a fair deal for the other country. So um, I think that our trade partners for so long took it for granted that we, they were just going to get a great tax deal. There are some people I have learned in Washington that really, they embrace trade agreements uh, so much and they, they value, they think they're so uh, beneficial that they'll give away the family farm in order to do it. And I just don't think that's a fair way to do it. I think. We have to trade with other countries. Certainly there's things in our countries that we can manufacture. Uh, you know, one thing in northern Alabama, and really in all the part of Alabama, uh, by and large, is we do a lot of poultry. And uh, we grow more chickens than we can eat. And so uh, it's a good opportunity for us to sell it to some of these countries that uh, maybe don't have the, uh, the facilities or have the uh, ability to raise chickens and, and, uh, and the amount that we do. So we can sell those that poultry to other countries, and so that's a great thing. Uh, and then there's things that we can buy from other countries that we can't produce. I mean, it, it's hard to produce uh, coffee, is a good example. You know, there's not many places in the United States, or if there's any that I know of, that you can grow coffee. So we have to buy that. So there's, there's plenty of rooms to have this, uh, plenty of room to have this negotiation between our two countries to, to buy things from them, to sell things to them, and vice versa. But uh, I think it's a mistake when we can do things here in the United States and we uh, turn it over to the other countries to allow them to uh, to make it. And uh, like I said, I th I've, I've just been very disappointed in a lot of my colleagues up here in Washington that they embrace a trade deal no matter the cost. And I think President Trump has been standing up and saying, you know, this, this, is not a bad, this is not a good deal for the United States, and we need to do something about it. And so I've been very pleased that he has been uh, worked very hard on that and really taken a stand against even some in his own party, in the Republican Party, that otherwise would just say, hey, it's a trade deal, but no matter what the, what the cost of it, let's go for it.